What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we are finally taking another look at new arrivals and restocks at DLT. It's been a very long time since I've done this and I'm excited to be back. There is an absolute butt ton of stuff at DLT that needs to be talked about. Uh, so if you'd like to go on this journey with me, then come along. If you don't want to hear the sound of my voice and you just want to look for yourself, I will conveniently leak these link not leak the page, I will link the pages down in the description so that you can check this stuff out for yourself. Either way, it helps my channel when you use those links, um, So that's, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram, metal underscore complex. Let's hop in to some new arrivals. Oh, they've updated this literally since like 10 minutes ago. Uh, so we have a bunch of new, I have not seen a fat daddy in a very long time. Wow. Are these, uh, hold on. Are these a quarter inch? Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Three V fat daddies. Boy, that is the fattest fat boy spider co looking knife I have ever seen in my life. Good Lord. That is a monster beef cannon of a knife. Um, anyways, we have, um, micro Praetorian teas. I haven't seen those in a while either. Ugh. Um, wow. So I'm, if you don't know, not a lot of what Medford makes currently is like ultra attractive to me, but I am very partial to the Marauder, um, knives and the middies, the M I D I's, which I think people confuse or assume are small knives because it's too close to mini or the brain reads it as mini. It is not, this is not a small knife. Now these are expensive knives for sure. I do like the sculpting, Medford's quality. Uh, they're, are these now Torx? Oh boy, well that's nice. Um, their quality currently is is very good. Uh, eight inches overall, that is 190 thousandths and 6.4 ounces. That is all of a full size knife for sure. I think about the only thing I don't like on the middies is the pocket clip. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. And these are in S45 VN. That's a, that's a, you know, <laughs> you could, I mean, I understand it's really expensive. You could EDC that. That's an EDCable Medford, right? Versus like the full size Praetorian teasers, more fat daddies in here. Man, these are straight off the, the battlefield. It looks like, wow. Uh, maybe I'm just not, uh, whoa, whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. What's today? <laughs> Today is February 2nd. Wow. Okay. So the MK3s and Magna Cut are dropping on February 6th. Okay. I have a review of this knife. This is a very, very nice American mid tech. Now, these are going to be expensive 450 bucks. We're in hinderer territory. But if you know what a full titanium hinderer costs, then you'll know that this is about, it's almost $200 less. Um, these should be running on phosphor bronze washers, which is very cool. I like the, I think this is a Morpheus pattern. Yeah. Morph, morph scales. Uh, it's going to be Magna cut. I'm assuming Les George get, does a good heat treat. In fact, I think in the review, I covered that. I have a full review on this knife. This, this one really surprised me. Um, I did not think that I was going to enjoy this knife because my favorite knife from Les George, and one of my favorite knives ever is the VECP, which is modeled after his custom rock eye. Uh, it's just hard for me to look at Les George knives and not expect that profile. I really liked this, and it actually works really, really well. This is just as nice. It's it's just as well made. Um, it's gl a glassy, smooth, phosphor bronze washer um, operating knife. Uh, some new, eh, I'm not really interested in the lion steel, but these Protex are very interesting. Did anybody um, take a look at Protex shot show stuff? Because wowzers, uh, that's not even the right word. That's a terrible word to explain how excited I am for some of Protex new stuff, but they've got some crazy um, customs and crazy production stuff coming out. Look at this CQC7 in Damascus. That's pretty cool. Small Sabenzas with the custom graphics or the unique graphics. Um, that's cool. Of course, you know, some people like the smaller one. Uh, obviously the full size Sabenza is much more popular and that's not my opinion. That's just factually true. They do have some large Sabenzas right here. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like all of a sudden Chris Reeve is just like making tons and tons and tons of these large Sabenzas with um, inlays 
and not nearly as much as the regular ones. I don't know why the regular ones are much more popular. Obviously, I mean, these are still, these, these usually sit here for a bit. Um, they're cool. I mean, if you're looking for an inlay version, then there you go, right? But I mean, maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe they make plenty of the standard size ones and they just sell out immediately. It just seems like whenever I see them, there's like one or two and then they're gone. But I don't know. Left-handed Praetorian Tees. I didn't even know they did that. I do like the sculpted titanium. I know not everybody likes the rainbow fish egg look, but I kind of I kind of like that. If you have trypophobia, that's probably not going to be your thing. If you have trypophobia and whatever the phobia is that is fear of rainbows, I'm, I've never heard of that, but... <laughs> it's 2024. There's a there's a label for everything now, right? Um, so there you go. The Riot XOMs are here. I tried to make a mention of this in my community tab. These are LMAX variants, so stainless variants that um, have special inlays. This one in particular is uh, pretty cool. I like the red and black there. Um, but if you like the idea of carrying the XOM, let, let me tell you, I, I've mentioned this before. The XOM looks kind of gimmicky. It looks kind of like a silly thing. It actually works very well as an EDC. I Every now and then, I, there was a while where I was like almost exclusively carrying this knife. And uh, I still go back to it and carry it just for fun every now and then. And it really does work well. Um, it's, it's cool that you can actually, you know, without it being an automatic, you can have a double-edged blade um, that actually goes completely inside of the handle. It, it really works well. Um, and honestly, I don't think the price is bad. Remember, these are manufactured by Riot, so the quality is just very, very good. This is kind of interesting here, the uh, Left Concepts S90V, what do they call this? The RWB, Shredded Carbon Fiber and Bronze Titanium. I wish that there was a little bit more going on with the handle scales, but it is pretty cool. I wonder who manufactured this. Could be Best, uh, could be, does it say? No, it doesn't. Could be Riot, could be Bastet, could be somebody else. I honestly don't know. But it's kind of an interesting looking knife for sure. Uh, we have the Spyderco, a whole bunch of exotic um, Timascus wire clip replacement clips for, for Spyderco knives. I would imagine that that's kind of a multi-fit situation. So if you really want to spice up your Spyderco knife with a fancy clip, right? We're going to have a whole crowd of people going, that's a lot of money for a clip. Come, come back to me um, 15 years ago with that comment, because that's how old it is. I mean, it's, it's much older than that. Fancy clips have been around for a long time. So if this is like a brand new thing to you and the knee-jerk reaction is to complain about it, get in line. Right? This, they've been around forever. Speaking of insane things, how about an even more expensive Timascus clip for your even more expensive PMP Alpha Beast? <laughs> there you go. They're here, by the way. Oh my gosh, there's a Damasteel one sitting right here. There you go. If you would like a brick of damasteel and i mean a brick look at the thickness of this blade we're approaching half an inch it's got to be the thickest piece of damasteel that's ever been attached to a production folding knife i own one of the original five of the pmp alpha beast and damasteel um so that's crazy um this one doesn't have the special clip um but it's essentially the same thing i, I want to say the one that i have originally was 2500 bucks so I guess you could look at that as a deal. Oh, <laughs> not really. But yeah, I mean, if you're into the crazy thick stuff, like I, I've got the new one. And by the way, part of the reason that's so expensive now, the, these, the standard ones are not $1,800. they are only $800. But the reason they're $300 more than the original Riot made ones is partially, I'm not saying I totally agree with the price tag, but partially because they are made by Fox Knives in Italy this time around instead of Riot in China. They're also magna cut this time around instead of D2 for the standard blade steel. Does that matter on a blade that's nearly half an inch thick or approaching half an inch thick? I don't know, but if you need something premium on your half an inch thick pocket knife, they make it in magna cut now. I'm sure we'll see the rest of them here in just a second. Mm, sorry, Gerber, that I'm just not interested in that. This is very interesting to me though. The Misto by um, Hogue. That is an American-made titanium able lock knife. Um, and yeah, it's pricey, but hey, you know what? For an American-made production knife in titanium and Magna Cut, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not super upset with that price tag. I want to handle it, but Hogue has a great track record. You guys know that they do Magna Cut very well. I bet. Doesn't Hogue run Magna Cut super hard? 
Does do they list it? They really sh yeah, there it is right there, sixty two to sixty four, right? Say what you will about their pricing, but they're not cutting corners here. Now, how well is that heat treatment and blade steel accentuated with a blade geometry like that? I don't know. Right? You you make your own decisions there. Benchmade readout, uh, Falk uh H1. Always always tempted to pick up a Falk Nevin fixed blade. I have no use for it. But I mean, let's be honest. I don't really have much of a use for the other 250 knives I own. This is surprisingly a really good automatic knife, and I love the forward twirl. It's just an odd combination of black and brown, but all right. We got a carbon fiber live wire, and we have, oh boy, now that, look at this. Look at this, guys. This is really nice. The live wire is one of the best American-made OTFs on the market right now. And a lot of people are going to be really shocked that, number one, it's made by Kershaw, and number two, that Kershaw has a knife that they charge $260 for. I'll remind you that if you're used to seeing $50 to $60 Kershaws, that's because those Kershaws are made in China. This is a USA OTF and is extremely competitive with the general competition for this knife, which would be Guardian Tactical, Microtech, Axial, etc. Right? Uh, if you look at their prices on their knives, this is right there in the same ballpark, and the power is definitely great. I know there's a lot of people, that's in MagnaCut too. I know there's a lot of people who have picked this knife up. Aluminum, thank you for doing aluminum and not plastic like some other companies right now. Um, other company right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a really good OTF. Really good. I love that they're doing dagger ground magna cut blades. I think that's awesome. Um, you can pick up Kunwoo's right now on their website. I've got an affiliate link for Kunwoo directly. And you guys know like um, like the Padre is available on the Kunwoo website. You have to pre-order it. It's going to be a bit. But these Kunwoo's have already landed in the United States. So if, you know, if you've ever ordered from Kunwoo and you're like, oh my gosh, it takes so long to get here. And yeah, it does. It's not that Kunwoo's doing anything wrong. It's got to come all the way over the ocean and then it has to sit in customs for a bit, right? Which is something that Kunwoo can't help. These Kunwoo's are already in the United States here at DLT Trading. If you're not familiar with Kunwoo, they make some of the best stuff on the market dollar for dollar in the premium production category. Uh, so if you, for example, want to pick up a Django, and you don't want to wait a month or two months for it, you can pick one up at DLT Trading. They're very, very good knives. Chavez Redemption, that's a uh, kind of an unknown DLT Trading exclusive. This is the Street Tanto, so it's smaller than the 229, but there it is if you're interested. Victorinox Kitchen Knives, I'm not really, I'm not a, much of a kitchen knife person. More small Sabenzas with unique graphics. Oh, for a second I thought that was a... Um, it looks like a three-quarter AR, doesn't it? That's an attention to detail MK2. Attention to detail also does a bar lock now. What? Well, look at that. Boy, that's a beautiful uh, pattern there. Is that milled? Well, I got, we got to look at this. We got to look at that. Can I, can I zoom in? I don't know why. It seems more personal when I... Use this tone of voice and zoom in. I think that's actually milled. You know, that's pretty cool. I wonder if those have better lockup than their frame locks. It's seven and a half inches. I gotta be honest, I would be tempted if this was eight inches. It's just me. I'm not saying that's like universally where it should be, but, and what's the price? I'm sorry, not the price, the Magnica. This is Magnica, right? This is USA small batch, right? So this is, this is gonna be that price. You just can't do it for the same price. It's like a USA Kershaw. But if it was not a Tanto and if it was eight inches, uh, I think I would be really tempted by that. Um, speaking of things that I am tempted to buy, you guys know that, and now this is coming soon, but I broke the tip off of my Rockstead and I love it and I still have it, but that is probably the most beautiful thing that Rockstead has ever made. Oh. Man, black and gold with a mirror polish ZDP 189 blade. Zero grind, by the way. The best cutter I have ever experienced. Oh, I even li I like this one better. Oh, baby. Oh, that's so good. I am selling myself on this knife right now. Oh, this is ready to go. Oh, I kind of I might have a decision to make here. Oh, man. I wish they had changed the clip. The clip's really underwhelming, but 
I'm not really buying it for the pocket clip. Man, that is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Gold carbon fiber. Man, that is so beautiful. Is it um so this one is the satin mirror, but wait, is the other one black? Dark matter gold. I think this is still a satin. If they did this, you know what would, what would sell this to me right now? If they did their DLC, their mirror DLC. Yeah, it's it's a it's a standard mirror polished blade, which is still very tempting. But I think I would buy this right now if it were their mirror polished DLC that they do. Um, that they should have considered doing that because the hardware is black. I mean, that would have been a really good contrast. It's it's really cool. Still, the best price Medford that exists is the uh, 187 DP or DPT in S90V, the DLT trading versions of it. So if you're looking to pick up a Medford and you don't want to spend a grand, I mean, pick up an S90V DPT. Those are or DP drop point or drop point Tanto is what that stands for. Um, that's your best bet. Like some of these get all the way down to like close to 500 for the plainest versions of them. Medford makes a ballast song. I didn't even know that. How big is this? That's what she said. The oh, good, good lord, that's ten and a half inches. <laughs> Jeez, that's it's something I would cut myself with immediately on accident, of course. But um, yeah, that's that's why I don't like ballast songs. I'm terrified of them. Spartan Arzy uh, folder uh, in Magnica. That's pretty cool. Are these the giant? This is a cleric too. This isn't the giant, giant one though. It's still huge though. It's a 10 inch double action OTF. Um, those do fire hard. I expected them to be a little sluggish, but they do fire hard. Apparently you can buy the Fenris, right? Has this been here for a bit? The Fenris? So if you're curious about this, the reason that it just barely fits in frame is because it is 25 <laughs> inches long. <laughs> I have this. I have this right to my right. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's pretty scary. It is a folding sword. Now, obviously, it has a secondary lock. And it looks like these new ones have this sort of uh, pin lock here to hold in the secondary stop pin. I, I would not recommend that you go out and um, chop wood with it. It's probably much better for fighting zombies. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, here are the Alpha Beasts. I have this here. The quality is exactly the same as the Riot made ones. They have a new pivot. They're now in Magna Cut. You can get them in black. You can get them in bronze or whatever. These are exclusively for people who, number one, have $800 lying around and have no idea what they want to buy. And number two, uh, are specifically, very specifically, into massively overbuilt knives. That's who these are built for, 100%. I personally love both of my Alpha Beasts. I don't use them. I They're too big to carry, but man, they're fun. Every time I get it out, it just puts a big smile on my face. RMJ Tactical Snuggles, the most appropriate name for a tactical warhammer that I've ever heard. Um, I like the Spartan Harzy daggers too. Those are cool. I wish the handle was a little bit different shaped, but okay, it's fine. Gosh, so many projects. There's so, there's so many pages of stuff that I have not looked at yet. This is wild. Um, American Service Knife. Are these actually made in the United States? They must be. Look at the price. Yeah, S45VN slip joints made in the United States. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of those there too. That's pretty neat. I had no idea... Uh, that those even existed. I'm going to go another page or so, and then I'd like to look at the restocks page and the drops page. Bunch of stuff that I expect to be here. I know some of this stuff you guys want me to go over, but it's a lot of this is like typical stuff that we see at DLT Trading. If you've never shopped here, like this is this is my number one favorite retailer to shop at. They probably have the best assortment of popular USA stuff. Um, and the biggest stock of it. I mean, like, they have so much. Olamic Cutleries, these are the best. The the new Whippersnappers, the Bolster Locks, those are the best Olamic Cutleries that they make. Red Horse Hellraiser, 
Those are fun. We got the War Pig here. I've got one of those here. I still need to review it. There's a Vehement um, Custom Mongrel. There's a bunch of those, actually. Uh, that one's apparently a DLT trading exclusive. Lots of stuff. Real quick, let's go back to the restocks page. Just real quick. I want to see if they've added anything new. I check this page probably once a day. Yeah. The Boker Applegate, like the Fairbairn Applegate, I would be much more interested in that knife if it wasn't 440C. Like, what are they What are they doing? Come on. I guess if you were just, like, into the history of this knife, then I guess that's fine. But come on. Like, give us, give us something else for the steel there. 440C. It's a great steal on a $50 knife. But we have the Military 2 in uh, Blurple G10 and S110V. Those are the new ones with the compression locks. A pink lightweight pair of three. That's most likely an S30V. The Kunmu Tao Sheep's Foot in Vanax. That's an excellent knife. The Kunmu Orion 2 or Orion 2 in LMAX. Also an excellent knife, especially for 200 bucks. What? There is no way that this is just sitting here. <laughs> oh man I got a decision to make do I want that button lock or do I want that um... oh man yeah I shouldn't even make this a part of my upload um, that is uh, that is 100% a knife that I want that's a knife that I want right now well Maybe they got more than one, guys, but at 425 bucks, that's one of the best USA-made mid-techs that you can get. That is a that is a stinking good deal in my book, and I might have to just go ahead and pick that up. I might have to do it. It's really hard for me to say no to that. Um, DLT drops. Let's look real quick. K2s. Those are I've been tempted by that many times. The Firecraft. That's kind of a cool looking knife. Yeah, that, we just saw that. It's kind of cool. I think that might be pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, check out uh, the links for each of these pages right down in the description so you can go and check this stuff out for yourself. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.